Hi, it's Alicia from The Pretty Brown Eye Reader. Recently, Joe from The Retired Book Nerd posted a video um, with a challenge. The challenge is called A Word About Words, in which she challenges booktubers to discuss some of their favorite quotes from books that they read in the past and how those words string together. It seemed like a very, very interesting challenge and when I first heard it, uh, one quote came to mind and I was thinking about others and I began looking through my notes and seeing so many good quotes from books that I read over the past and I just want to share a few of you. The first quote, the quote that I was thinking of that came to mind is from a book, Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. Sister Soldier. In that book, the lead character, her name is Winter, hence the title, and um, this is a, I guess you would call it a coming of age story about a young girl growing up in New York and the challenges that she faces. This is probably one of the books that is considered urban literature, but to me it's just a great story. And the, I don't have a copy of the book, and the reason I don't have a copy of the book is in the past I have worked as an adult educator at a technical school in my area, and I worked um, in the GED program. So for students who were studying for the GED, it was an independent study, and they still had to learn the the elements that you would learn in high school, like how to break down a story with characters, plot, climax, what does the title mean? Where is the irony in the story? Those type of things. And so I found as I was working in this environment that the students couldn't relate to the material that they were told that they need to read. For instance, I remember two of the things that um, the lead teacher often wanted them to read was A Mice and Men and The Old Man and the Sea. So um, many of the students that I had came from um, low income areas, they were African American and they could not relate to the, the material that the lead teacher wanted them to read. Seeing that the frustration on their face when they would come to me like, Miss Alicia, I can't understand this stuff, so how am I supposed to understand what I need to know for the test or to get to my next module? So I took it upon myself to bring in some books that I had, I had in my own personal library. I brought in all the paper the mass market paperback books that I had and The Coldest Winter Ever was one of those books. The younger people in the class would read the book and what I would do is ask them to keep a journal. Through the journals and discussion of the, the book, I would introduce what is plot, what is character. As they were telling me about, some, for instance I would say, as they were telling me about people in the story, I said that is a character. Who is the main character? And so that's how I would teach them the parts of a story by using um, this novel and they could relate to the novel and what I found was once they got interested in that story they would ask me well, what happened to the characters in there I said well Sister Soldier she wrote more than one book so you're gonna have to go to the library and get the other ones because I don't have them and so what I found was students would begin to go to the library and um, check out books from Sister Soldier but then as while they were there and talking to the librarian the librarians would suggest other books and so they would bring their books to class and that's how I was able to help get them started on some of the students started on reading and my lead teacher was a little she was a little shocked by well how did this happen how did they all of a sudden couldn't understand uh, their English modules to now they're understanding it was just it, that story I had to find something that they could relate to um but anyway so I don't have a copy of that book because when I left that job someone was still reading it and so I told them just to keep it and just to pass it on to the next person who wanted to read it so one of the quotes that always sticks with me from um the coldest winter ever is the following quote every right decision brings us blessings every wrong decision brings us pain that one sentence sums up the entire experience Winter has in that book. Whenever she made right decisions, she, she had blessings. When she made wrong decisions, she brought pain to herself and to others in the story. Some people may wonder, well, how do you know when you're making a right decision? The way I, I justify making a right decision 
is am I causing harm to myself or anyone else? If I'm not causing harm to anyone else, that's most likely a right decision and it will bring about blessings. When I'm causing harm to myself or someone else, it will bring about pain. So that, for me, is a quote that has stuck with me since I read The Coldest Winter Ever. And it's one that, to me, summarizes the book. The second, story, the second book I would like to discuss that I have, um, have quotes from is called Having Our Say. And it's by the Delaney sisters, Sadie and Bessie. They are two women who lived to be well into their hundreds. I think they died at 109 and 107 respectively. I'm not sure what exactly their um, age was when they died. Their story has been made into a movie where the lovely Ruby D and Diane Carroll played them. What better, <laughs> two better actresses than that to pay, play your um, life story. But to me, they are some very interesting women because they were born um, right after the Reconstruction era and they lived up into the 1990s or, or early 2000 maybe. But for them to see that wide breadth of history, especially concerning African Americans, is tremendous. They even talk about in the book... Um, when the March on Washington happened, they were already senior citizens. And that is kind of amazing to me that, you know, they watched it on TV because they didn't want to go because they were, they felt they were too old. And, and to think that they lived 30 more years past that, that that's amazing to me. Anyway, these ladies share so much wisdom in their book. It's several quotes and several things that they say in the book that I want to share. Uh, one of them is actually a quote that they, they had from their father that he used to tell them all the time. Their father was a teacher and he, he instilled in them the importance of giving back, especially to African Americans or colored people as they were called at that time, to help the race progress from the legacy of slavery into something more than what was anticipated of them at the time. So he would tell them, don't ever give up. Remember, they can segregate you, but they can't control your mind. Your mind is still yours. And I just, I love that, that amount of wisdom from them, <clears throat> from their father. Secondly, their family had a creed. And I had never heard of the African American family having a creed, but, um, so that was something interesting to me. But their creed was self-improvement through education, civic mindedness, ethical living, strong belief in God. And I thought that was just this amazing creed to have. And and they also had a motto, a family motto, which was, your job is to help somebody. So those are some things that I took away from that book. And um, I encourage everyone to read it. It's a very, very interesting read. The last book that I have a quote from is from my future mother-in-law. <laughs> You may wonder, how is it? who is my future mother-in-law? Well, it's Miss Lucille O'Neill, mother of Shaquille O'Neal. Anybody that knows me knows that I have been a huge fan of Shaquille O'Neal, the basketball player, since he was a, a student at LSU. And I felt he got snubbed for not being on the first dream team. They chose Christian Leitner from Duke. But anyway, that's a whole other situation. But um, Shaquille O'Neal is like one of the people that I admire. I follow everything about him. And so when I saw that his mother had written a book, I had to read it to find out what she had to say. It is a very um, interesting book as most, for me, as most biographies are. She talks about the challenges she had growing up, including uh, becoming a teenage mother when she got pregnant with Shaquille and how she persevered through all of that. And her, the writing style for the book was very interesting because she always left a hook at the end of the chapter to keep you reading. And so I really enjoyed um, Miss O'Neill's book, Miss Lucille. I forgot to say the name of the book. It Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go. And she got that saying from someone who, an uh, older lady who told her, honey, you need to walk like you got somewhere to go. So she always kept that in her heart. And so she, whenever, whatever she was doing, she always tried to hold herself with dignity and to walk like she definitely had somewhere to go. But uh, even though that was a very good quote from the book, 
the quote that I love is when she talks about her life after she's um, Miss O'Neill went on to get her own education after her kids have gotten grown and her husband was in the military and um, she they lived in Germany and then they moved back to the U.S. but she later in life got her master's degree from Phoenix just talk about how wonderful her, well how how much her life has changed from when she was a child to now she had a beautiful quote that summed up her life that I just absolutely love and I think about it often she says I sleep on the sheets of satisfaction the pillows of peace and the cushions of confidence that is a wonderful quote to live by who cannot want confidence satisfaction and peace in their life and um, I thank Miss Lucille for writing that for my future mother-in-law <laughs> one day maybe um, but anyway um, these are just some books that I've read over the past and some of the quotes that have stuck with me. I thank you, Joe, for the challenge. It was wonderful thinking about the types of books that I've read and some of the quotes that have stuck with me and why I like those quotes. And um, I hope everyone will take the challenge and let me know if there are some quotes that you like and so that we can discuss um, great books and just in another way. Thanks again, Joe, and thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.